Hello and welcome back to The Note. Let's take a tour of the world today as we reach the half point of the year. We've seen deflation scares in recent months in the Eurozone and we've also seen inflation scares in various parts of the emerging markets. How are they going to be resolved and where is the world going to find growth over the next year or two? With me now to discuss this is the Chief Global Economist at Morgan Stanley, Joachim Fels. Joachim, thank you very much for joining me once more. Let's start by taking a look at uh, a chart from your own uh, recent um, uh, global outlook, looking at where growth is going to be coming from. Obviously, very recently, we've been reliant on the emerging world. As I understand it, you're expecting the developed world now to have to take up rather more of the slack. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. I think the last five years of this expansion, which started exactly five years ago, mm. I think has been very special because it was led by emerging markets. They were out of the recession first, led by stimulus from China. So we had very strong growth in emerging markets, partly fueled by QE in the developed world, mm. which pushed a lot of funds, a lot of capital into the emerging world. Um, and the developed markets were working through the deleveraging process. So right. for the developed market economies, it's been a very bumpy, below par and brittle expansion, a triple B expansion, mm. so to speak. Now, looking ahead, I think the two will swap roles. So emerging markets, I think, are now struggling Many of the traditional growth models are broken in EM, and you can see how the blue part of the bars, the EM contribution to growth, has slowed. Right. And at the same time, we think we're now at the stage where the developed markets are picking up, and you can see how the red part of the bars is now accelerating. So this is driven by the US and the UK, and partly by the Eurozone. And, and the completion of the deleveraging cycle, in particular, in the developed world? Or? Yes, I think at least for the US and the UK, the deleveraging is behind us. We are now in a moderate releveraging cycle. Right? Right. The banking sector has cleaned up that its balance sheet. Um, households, private households, have be cleaned up their balance sheets. Corporates are sound. The euro area is lagging a little bit behind. They're still deleveraging in the banking sector right. and the household sector to do. But by and large, deleveraging is behind us and we're now in the, in the releveraging phase. OK, now let's take a look at your forecasts for inflation. And this looks really very close to Goldilocks. Everything converging over the next two years almost exactly on that target of 2%. Are we... Can we be comfortable in saying that uh, the Eurozone deflation scare can be put behind us? I think so. I'm not 100% sure, mm. but I think at least we have seen action from the ECB. They announced a fairly comprehensive package, including negative interest mm. rates, including a large LTRO that will uh, kick in in September and then in November again. So I think uh, this helps to overcome the deflation scare in the Euro area. Okay. Do uh, they need to move on to QE itself? Um, I don't think they will because the political hurdles are very high. I think before they do QE, they would rather cut the deposit rate again. Mm. So QE, I think, is kind of a, last, a measure of very last resort. And when it comes to the states, we have actually seen a noticeable rise in core inflation over the last few months, which Janet Yellen says is noise. Is he right about that? Yeah, well, as you can see in the chart, the red line that's a little bit hidden shows CPI headline inflation, which has now moved just above 2%. Core CPI is now running exactly at 2%. Um, but I agree with Janet Yellen. I think the, this is largely noise. Right. We think inflation will come back down again. And what really matters is whether we will continue to see um, a total lack of wage pressures. So right. far, there are no signs of wage pickup in the U.S., we think this is likely to continue. We may get some moderate increase in wages, right. but we think this will be compensated by a pickup in productivity so that unit labor costs uh, stay low and inflation pressure stay low as well. That's why we think the Fed will move rates higher much later than the markets are currently pricing in. Like when? Well, we think first half of 2016, whereas the market is now priced for something like the autumn of 2015. OK, Joachim, thank you very much indeed. If that forecast is right, obviously very many people investing in the markets will be very happy, particularly uh, in the equity markets. It does also imply that bond yields will rise steadily as we thought they were going to do so far this year.